is up there everybody and welcome back to the channel guys now in today's video guys i'm going to be showing you guys how to do a clutch fluid flush on my 1993 honda civic tail so now this is a fairly easy job you guys can do it at home but i'm going to on today's video guys i'm going to be showing you guys the two person method job so i'm going to be having my dad in the car stepping on the clutch and while he's you know stepping on the clutch i'm going to be opening and closing the bleeder valve so yeah so other than that, guys, let's jump right into our video. All right, guys, so here is my Del Sol's engine bay, guys. So as you guys can see, there's the engine, and that's the transmission. All right, cool. Now, down here, guys, you guys can see the bleeder valve down there. And if you guys can see it right there, that little black cap right there. So I'm going to take the black cap off, and that's where the bleeder valve is going to be. And I think I'm going to be using an 8 mil wrench to open and close that up. I want to make sure. It might be 10. I don't know. I haven't checked that yet, but I'll let you guys know. And then, yeah, here is... This one right here is gonna be your master cylinder. The clutch fluid that you're gonna be using is gonna be a dot three or dot four uh, brake fluid that they sell at Honda, so use that. That's what I would recommend. All right guys, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna suck it out, a little bit of the brake fluid out from the clutch master cylinder, just a little bit. Using the Mighty Vac. I don't know, what's this cap for? That's interesting. All right, now I'm gonna add the dot three brake fluid. I'm gonna just pour it all the way to the top. All right, that should be good. Now we are ready to flush the clutch fluid. All right, so I got the hose connected. It is ready to go, so I'm gonna be using the eight mil wrench. So I'm gonna loosen this bad boy up. All right, Dad, uh, please go ahead and go down. Down? Yeah. Up, down, yeah. up, down. Yeah. So soon as he goes down, I open the bleeder bow and close it. Up. All right, guys, so that'll pretty much do for today's video, guys. As you guys saw how easy it was with the two person method. Now, if your clutch pedal, if you once you step on it and then once you let it go, if your clutch pedal doesn't come back up, then please, please, please keep flushing it because there's probably an air bubble stuck inside of the system. So keep doing it until the clutch feels solid going up and down, up and down. So, but yeah, anyways guys, another tip is that please keep your eye on the level for the clutch master cylinder right here. Please keep your eye on it because you don't want to run out. You don't want the fluid to run out. So, you know, there's an air bubble stuck into it. You don't want that to happen. So after like five flushes, fill it back up. After five flushes, fill it back up. Please, please, please keep your eye on it because this clutch master cylinder right here is very very tiny so it sucks up the fluid very very fast so please keep your eye on that all right guys my car is running clutch on the floor let it off car still runs good now i'm gonna do the gear testing if the gear doesn't go in then there's probably an air bubble stuck inside of the master cylinder so make sure you guys check that out but yeah it goes into every single gear in so that's all good all right guys, so I would like to end my video here today guys. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now I do have one bad news on my RSX guys. I think I mentioned it on one of my last video guys, but uh, my starter might be going out. So I read on the bunch of RSX forms and then the K series form and then I asked a bunch of my you know RSX friends that you know whenever I start out my car I hear a teeth to teeth grinding noise going on with the starter and then the flywheel the fl uh, the starter teeth is not releasing back quick enough that's the issue that I've been having because the weather is really cold right now here in Seattle Washington but the spring season is coming back up so it's looking really good so I'm gonna wait until this summer to start it back up and then if it's still the same issue then I'm gonna replace the starter but then if it's not then you guys were right definitely the cold weather definitely you know really affect that but yeah i hope i do not have to replace the starter this summer i mean if i have to it should be a fairly easy job i can just get underneath and just take it out in and out job it should be that but i hope the subframe will not be in the way but if that's the case it should be fine because this summer i'm gonna be doing crap ton of stuff to this car so 
Yeah, I'm still waiting on the spoon parts, man. I'm still waiting on the spoon parts. It takes a while. So, yeah, but other than guys, if this video was helpful, guys, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, guys, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Other than that, guys, peace out and stay thirsty, my friends.